Good morning and welcome to Wednesday morning reflection. We have a notice that there is a reminder of pastoral principles course that's starting on the 13th of July. And if you can see Sally's notice on the parish family news with details of this five week course. And without further ado, we begin with our call to worship. I'm going to be reading from the Book of Common Prayer on page 304 if you'd like to follow. Otherwise, you may listen and just praise the Lord. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning and the heavens are the works of your hands. As we rejoice in the gift of the word made flesh, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts and your praise ever be on our lips. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. And our collect for this morning. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified. Hear our prayer, which we offer for your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry, they may serve you in holiness and truth. To the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So today we are going to read from 2 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 5 to 17. That's 2 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 5 to 17. But if anyone has caused grief, he has not grieved me, but all of you to some extent, not to be too severe. This punishment, which was inflicted by the majority, is sufficient for such a man, so that on the contrary, you ought rather to forgive and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one be swallowed up with too much sorrow. Therefore, I urge you to reaffirm your love to him. For to this end, I also wrote that I might put you to the test, whether you are obedient in all things. Now, whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For if indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one of your, for your sake in the presence of Christ. Lest Satan should take an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened to me by the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit, because I did not find Titus my brother. But taking my leave of them, I departed for Macedonia. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ, among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one we are the aroma of death leading to death, to the other the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not, as so many, peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God, in Christ. Thanks be to God. So I have a few thoughts on that. I believe a good place to start is actually the previous verse, verse four. It really sets the scene for Paul's emotion. He says, I wrote you previously sobbing and with a broken heart. I was filled with anguish and deep distress. I had no intention of causing you pain, but to convey the overwhelming measure of my love for you. It seems that there was someone in the church in Corinth 
that had caused a lot of pain and distress to Paul and thereby also the congregation. The congregation seems to have stood behind Paul and supported him and felt his pain, probably because they loved him so much. But now he is asking them to forgive this person for whatever they have done, because if they keep punishing this person, then that person is going to become discouraged and perhaps turn away. So Paul is begging them and saying, find that love, that deep love that you have for this person and bring it back and encourage them. They have had enough punishment and they need encouragement from their brothers and sisters in Christ. It is better to forgive in Christ, lest they become overwhelmed with the feelings of guilt and shame. Paul was ever thinking of leading the people to Christ, and this situation is no different. The congregation was now to be the example to this person of forgiveness and encouragement. I think it's actually very good that we don't know the whole situation. and We don't actually know the ins and outs and what this person did, because then we can really apply it to anything that goes on in the church, any contention that there is. We need to forgive. If someone's offended you, forgive them. Love them with Christ's love. Follow the example of Paul and of Christ. This is important so that Satan does not get a foothold. Abolish the emotions of bitterness or resentment. The second part of this passage, Paul goes to Troas. And what's wonderful to hear is that the Lord opens a gate of opportunity for him there to minister the word. The Lord will always give us opportunity to witness for him. We only need to pray and ask him for that. We could literally witness to everybody we meet or anyone we meet. People we already know as well as people that we don't know. Every one of us has a testimony or a story to tell about how good the Lord has been to us. The fact that we are, in verse 14, partners of his endless triumph is something to boast about in itself. In the New King James Version, which I read, 14 and 15, they're nice and clear. I'm going to read them again. Now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. Just think on that for a moment. We are the fragrance of Christ. As we walk around, we should feel confident that those around us can pick up a scent a beautiful smell. Those that know Christ may love that scent. Those that don't, I assume, either don't recognize it and want to know it more, or maybe they don't like that scent at all. Maybe they turn from it and we need to pray for them. But we don't stop wearing the scent. I know that when I was a teenager, we would be visiting my cousins in the Cape and sometimes would be dropped off at the mall to go and see a movie or to do some shopping. And I would always go to a particular store that had clothes and makeup and fragrances, and you were allowed to test the fragrances. And there was one particular fragrance I really, really liked. And perhaps it was a little bit strong for me as a 16 year old, but I would spray this fragrance on everywhere because I thought it was wonderful. I liked to even smell it on myself. And when I would get back in the car with my mum, she would be, oh, that's a bit strong. And it was. But I still love that feeling of wearing that fragrance. Now, I'm not telling you to go and put on a lot of aftershave. But what you need to think about is having Christ on you as a fragrance that just goes out, a sweet smell that as you walk through that shopping mall or as you walk through the street, then people get a sense of who Christ is because of the way that you're behaving. 
So that's how we should live our lives. Do your work colleagues know that you love Christ by the way you smell? If your character was a perfume, then what would it smell like? I leave you with that thought. And now we come to our prayers. Please bow your heads. Mighty God, we adore you and have much to thank you for. Thank you for this day and help us to see it as the best day of our lives. Help us to see every day as the best day of our lives because you are in it with us. You are our rock and our redeemer. You forgive us and set us free. Help us to keep our eyes on you and follow your ways. Help us to be a fragrance of you to all we meet, those in Christ and those that are in need of your salvation. For those that are lost, we pray that you will call them to you and that we, like planting a seed, may leave an aroma of you so that they seek you out. We pray for the world at large and particularly for Jerusalem in this time of unrest. We pray for our own country and give thanks for the possible lifting of restrictions on the 19th of July. Please, Lord, help us to eradicate the threat of this virus worldwide. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image and yet more wonderfully restored us in your Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as he came to share our human nature, so we may be partakers of his divine glory who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, I leave you with the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.